<laughs> JavaScript is so stupid. Look, look. Uh, type of no is object. <laughs> That's so stupid. Look, look. One plus one plus one plus three. Whoa! Well, JavaScript. I'm going to tweet this. JavaScript is stupid. No. JavaScript is not stupid. In fact, I feel like this word. Why? I feel like we should have evolved, like, as a society to just not use the word stupid. Anyway, um, JavaScript is everywhere. Like it is the, probably at this point, uh, at this given point in time, I don't know for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if you told me it is the most popular programming language on earth. Um, it's in everything. It's in your computer, your phone, probably your smart TV, your blender, your vacuum. You can run JavaScript everywhere and a lot of people do. It is um, super popular and kind of runs many parts of the world. Uh, so how exactly is it stupid? See, I think that we tend to criticize and malign that which we do not understand. And so for our time together today, my goal is to talk a little bit about JavaScript, give you some background that maybe you're lacking, some insight into how it, it's made today, um, and then we can revisit that statement in the beginning. JavaScript is stupid. Um, and so let's get started uh, talking about the history. I mean, JavaScript, you know, it's, it, JavaScript is almost as old as I am. Like it was created in 1995 um, by a dude named Brendan Eich. Um, and, and it was for Netscape Navigator. That was like the prevalent browser when I was two years old. Yeah, you should feel old. I mean, or young, I don't know. Um, but so that was the thing. The, the, the problem was it was very powerful, very interactive. And you know, a lot of other browsers wanted to adopt it essentially. Um, the problem is to do something like that, you need standardization. It needs to be, otherwise what happens is like it maybe works in Netscape, but then it doesn't work in Internet Explorer as usual. And then it maybe works in Safari or like, you need standardization across platforms so that something can work reliably. It's exactly because of this standardization that JavaScript works everywhere cell phones to kitchen appliances to whatever. Um, how does that standardization work? So in 1997, JavaScript was handed from um, Netscape to, a found, to ECMA. ECMA is the European Computer Manufacturers Association. Um, ECMA 262 is the name of the specification of JavaScript. Uh, it's, that's, that's why it's called actually ECMAScript. The name is ECMAScript. JavaScript was something Oracle tried once and the like nickname stuff, but it's actually called ECMAScript. Um, ES1, so ECMAScript version one was the first specification ever. I think it was around 1997 and that um, grew until, you know, it, it went through many versions until ECMAScript 5, which was probably the most common one and where like the web took off in a big way. Um, ES5, was also, I think, introduced in Firefox and so on. And then JavaScript kind of through this process became very prominent. There's a technical committee or TC at ECMA 262 um, that oversees the leadership of this language, the shaping of this language, specifically the specification as in like, how does the code you're gonna write look and the implementation. Um, the, the running off that code in a runtime like a browser. So the specification and the implementation are dealt with, are decided upon, are worked on by TC39, Technical Committee 39 at ECMA. Um, who are these people? Who is this committee up in the clouds deciding on syntax that I'm going to be writing and then how a browser is going to run that syntax? Specification, implement, who are these people? Um, that's a great question. A lot of companies um, can get a seat at the table at TC39, at ECMA, um, and you would really just have to pay a fee. Uh, this fee depends on the size of your company in terms of like income and employees. But if you're like tiny, like if you're the size of Zada, I think it's 3,500 Swiss francs per year. Yeah, I think that's, that's not that much if you want to shape a language. Um, and as you can imagine, in this committee are people from the large companies that represent the web, right? So people from Meta, Microsoft, um, Google, Apple, you get the idea. So, so these companies have seats at the table and they participate in committee meetings and achieve consensus 
on specification where like syntax, like the pipeline operator or something is, is drafted in a document. And then when the specification looks all right, there's consensus, it goes to implementation. And this is where like browser vendors work with consultancies to implement the specification so that your stuff, the syntax that you write in JavaScript works in Chrome and in whatever runtime uh, they want essentially. So implementation and specification is, is handled by TC39. Uh, but who's in charge? Who's in charge of this committee? Um, there are three companies. Well, there are delegates to TC39 from three companies in charge. There are three chairs. Um, one of them is from Microsoft, as you'd imagine. Um, his name is Brian and it's, it's Microsoft. So they have a vested interest. I mean, they make a browser and they have a lot of web stuff, but then there's Bloomberg. Yes, a news company. Um, who's who's a co-chair one of the three chairs and and Bloomberg I mean especially as news on the web is such a big deal you can you can see the vested interest there in fact Bloomberg I think is leading a the implementation and specification of, of a new date primitive temporal it's called um, and temporal essentially TLDR will just replace like moment JS and date FNs and stuff like that anyway um sidecar so Microsoft Bloomberg and then the third is from Igalia what is Egalia? I feel like Egalia is this unknown company, but it ought not be unknown. And that's because Egalia makes JavaScript work. They literally implement the specification more or less everywhere it runs. Yeah, like, so if, if you try to do something in Chrome, um, if you run like, you know, in your browser, if you do like array.find, right, that was probably implemented by Egalia. Egalia is a consultancy, um, an open source consultancy where people from TC39, companies from TC39, um, will essentially pay them to build the specification, to implement the specification in the browser. So Apple will go to TC30, will go to Egalia and say, hey, Egalia, here's a huge amount of money, make it work in Safari. And since Safari um, and WebKit's open source, Egalia will do it, they'll pull requests. Um, Google will go to Egalia and say, hey, can you make this thing work in Chrome? They, they pay Egalia, Egalia makes it work. So like Egalia makes JavaScript run, right? And, and given JavaScript's reach, I feel like more people should know this, but I feel like they don't. Um, so yeah, Bloomberg, Microsoft, and Egalia. Egalia handles specification and implementation as a consultancy, um, but I think they, they implement a lot of the stuff. I, I don't know if, if the others in TC39 implement as much as Egalia does. Um, those are the heads, and as you can imagine, in a committee, there's any number of different people. The process of, of making a language feature in JavaScript is also quite interesting. Like, it goes in stages um, from, from zero to, I think, four, um, where stage zero is just like a hypothesis in a way, um, and stage four is this is about to be real. Um, don't take my word for it, although this is online, um, but I just wanted to give you like very hand wavy insight, maybe oversimplified insight into what it takes to make this language and where it comes from. I'm oversimplifying on purpose, you know why? Because this video is intended for people who use the word stupid to describe a programming language. I mean, I'm not gonna like, like not oversimplify, this probably should be oversimplified um, if you're using such language in tech. Anyway, um, that's, that's the gist of it. Um, if you wanna contribute, if you actually wanna like participate in, in TC Internet, it's open. Like you could go on GitHub and look at proposals of language features and where they're going and so on and contribute. If you wanna do that here, look on the computer. Um, this is actually the ECMA TC39 org on GitHub. And you can actually see like the test suite for the language specification. This is an, the proposal I talked about with Temporal that will replace like, um, or at least that tries to replace date FNs. As you can see, it's stage three with a link to what that means and the other proposals in stage three. Um, and this is essentially the roadmap here of, of JavaScript. Um, so it's really fascinating stuff. Um, and here I may be wrong, maybe stage four doesn't exist. I don't know. Um, finished proposals. Are these considered stage four? I don't know. Um, the details are, are wavy, as I said, uh, but that's not really the goal. The goal is to give us a bit more insight, a bit more appreciation for JavaScript. And hopefully now, if we go back and ask the question, is it actually stupid? If we revisit that statement, I don't think so. Like there's nothing that has worked this reliably since 1995 
except maybe me, my, my, my humanness um, since 93. Um, but to, to have something evolve like JavaScript has evolved, to be as powerful and as prominent and as preeminent and as prevalent as JavaScript everywhere, you have to make trade-offs. So why is type of null an object backwards compatibility? It was an object. Maybe it was a mistake in the specification, um, but we didn't, we couldn't catch it in time. And so a lot of people built a lot of things on the web and off that rely on that. Whereas if we fix it now, we would break a significant portion of the web. So we can't, there is no going back. Um, that's just how it is. As if you've never written legacy code before that you're scared to refactor. Um, that's, I think the, the gist of why JavaScript is the way it is. Um, does that make it stupid? No. It, it makes it actually kind of a miracle that it works so well still and is everywhere still. Um, but that's just my take. I'd love to hear what you have to say. What do you think? Did I miss something? Did I mess up something? What do you want to nitpick? What do you want to discuss? What do you want to question, comment, praise? Leave me a comment or at me on Twitter. Uh, but for now, that's been it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.